So in order to understand React, we must first understand single page applications, otherwise known as SPAs or SPAs. And the best way to understand SPAs is to compare them with traditional web applications. So let's review the fundamentals. With a traditional web application, the user navigates from page to page on our website. And every time they land on a specific page or route or path, the browser makes a request to a server somewhere on the internet. The server figures out what route the user is on and it responds with the HTML, the CSS and JavaScript for that given page. The browser then receives that HTML, CSS and JavaScript and it renders the page that the user sees. From that point forward, the process repeats every time the user visits a new page. So maybe the user will start out on the home page, and this process occurs once, then the user will navigate to slash users or slash pets by clicking on some kind of hyperlink on the page, and the process repeats again. So the browser makes another request to the server, the server responds with a new batch of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So each time the page is refreshed or re-rendered or reloaded. Typically in a browser, you're going to see that spinning circle pop up typically near your URL bar whenever the page is loading as it's awaiting that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from the browser. So each page is sort of its own independent reload. It kind of starts up from scratch and paints the entire page based on what it gets back from the server. So how does that contrast with single page applications, which are sort of the new paradigm? So in single page applications on initial load, which means whenever the user visits their first page on a website that is a single page application, the browser still receives HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but that JavaScript is a large bundle from the server. And that JavaScript contains all that it needs to know in order to render effectively any page on that website. Now, there are some variations on this where there's smaller JavaScript bundles and they may, for example, contain just what they need to know to render a couple pages, but the same principle applies. We basically get a big JavaScript bundle that consists of some kind of single page application library. It could be something like React, but there's also other options like Angular or Vue, and they all work very similarly. The idea is that JavaScript is going to handle all future updates to the page. So JavaScript as a programming language that originated in the browser actually has remarkable power when it comes to manipulating page elements. JavaScript can create HTML elements, it can remove HTML elements, it can update elements, for example, by adding a class name to them or removing a CSS class name or injecting text or injecting other HTML children within a parent HTML element, JavaScript can do all of this programmatically. And the bundle that we received from the server knows how to do all of this for the various features or pages on the website. So the reason it's called a single page application is because in an ideal scenario, the page only loads once, right? The, the page loads, you get all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that you'll ever need. And as the user uses the app, JavaScript is responsible for all future updates. We don't actually make another request to the server for more HTML or CSS or JavaScript. JavaScript is fully responsible on the front end for rendering the next experience for the user. So you might ask the question, what about something like navigation? What if the user goes to a new route? Well, whenever we do that, we just give the user the illusion of navigating from page to page. But in reality, the single page application simply renders new content as the user navigates from route to route. So JavaScript can totally tear down the page that you see on the screen by simply removing all the existing HTML elements and then painting a new picture on the DOM on the interface by adding a whole bunch of other new elements and then presenting them to the user. And because all of this takes place on the front end without the need to make an additional request to a separate server somewhere on the internet, the result can be a seamless, more app-like user experience because all the user needs to wait for is for JavaScript to tear things down and build them back up again. There's no need to make a request to another computer somewhere on the internet. Now, that's not to say that there is a complete disconnect from that point forward between the single page application and the backend server. Quite the opposite, in fact, because there's a lot of data that is dynamic, that is uh, changing, right? That begins its existence when the user, for example, creates a new record or fills out data into a form. 
So when the app requires data that impacts the interface, the app makes an asynchronous request for data to the server. We can send a request to the server to save a specific record or to fetch a specific record or multiple records. JavaScript operates the exact same way. It receives that data. It says, okay, I've received what I need to paint a new interface. So now that I have this data, I'm gonna tear down what I have right here and build up a new interface for the user. The key takeaway is the JavaScript library is responsible for building up the user face. The page loads once, it's technically just a single browser page behind the scenes, and we give the user the illusion of using a regular web application. We have pages and we have routes and we have sections, but behind the scenes, it's just JavaScript tearing things down and building them back up again. That is the entire idea behind single page applications, all right? And we're going to see how React helps us accomplish this as we start exploring that library. That's all there is to cover in this lesson. And in the very next lesson, we're going to start our discussion on React components, which are the fundamental building block of the library. So super exciting stuff, and I will see you there.